Hey guys, it's Phil. Welcome to another video. So recently, we interactively built a 1 GHz retro gaming PC and we ended up with a modern looking computer with an Athlon running at 1 GHz, 512 MB of RAM, a quite new socket A motherboard and we ended up with a PowerVR Cairo 2 video card and also a 120 GB SSD. And you guys wanted to use Windows Millennium Edition and I've never used it before so I thought that's a great opportunity to give it a go. Now I must say your comments got me a little bit worried there, they were quite negative and I expected all sorts of issues. So let's find out in this video how I went with using Windows Millennium Edition for the first time on this retro gaming machine. So my first step is always the BIOS, I load the optimized defaults and then I check the date and the time. I also set the unused drive to none which helps with faster booting. I then go into the section with the onboard devices and I turn anything off that I don't need. For example, I didn't use the onboard sound card or the ethernet controller as well as the serial and the parallel ports. Then I have a look in the boot order. I set it usually to floppy first, then the CD-ROM and then the hard drive. And the hard drive in our case is the 120 gigabyte SSD which runs off the Promise SATA controller. I also went into the memory speed and set it to uh, 133 to match the front side bus of the processor and this is an Exper motherboard, it's related to Gigabyte so you can use the Control F1 trick which will unlock additional uh, BIOS options. So installing Windows ME is very similar to Windows 98, it just feels a little bit more polished and modern. Um, the hard drive was raw, I deleted all the partitions and I booted from the Millennium CD. It then went ahead and partitioned the entire drive. After a reboot it then formatted it and then you could choose the installation options. I went with the uh, custom installation, I picked what I wanted and you answer the various prompts about what country you're in, the keyboard layout, uh, username, uh, computer name, network name and, and that kind of stuff. And of course you get to the license key and that's really it. So the installation there weren't any issues, no hanging at the plug and play section. So basically very similar experience to Windows 98. Just everything looks a little bit nicer and uh, more neat and more uh, modern basically. And now we're off to the drivers. Now the motherboard we're using has the VIA KT600 chipset and that's quite a, a modern socket A chipset. It's definitely not one of the earlier ones that has uh, bugs. It's quite a mature chipset and um, VIA is actually really good with the drivers. You can go to the website right now and you can get all the chipset drivers, the IDE drivers, Ethernet drivers, USB drivers, whatever you want. So um, I didn't use the supply CD that came with the motherboard box. I actually went to the VIA website and downloaded the latest driver. So the first driver I installed was the chipset driver which was the VIA Hyperion Pro 5.24a and that installed fine however I got an error for the IDE driver but that's not a big deal because there's a separate driver for that. After a restart I installed the PowerVR Cairo 2 drivers. I've got version 2.01.21.0 triple O seven. I believe these are the latest and final drivers. After restart I set the resolution to 1024 by 768 and 32 bit colors. Next was the ID driver. Now the only ID device we're using is the optical drive and the driver has the version number 3.20b so via Busmaster driver and uh, I had a look in device manager and just confirmed that that, that everything is working there. After the restart I installed the USB 2.0 driver so the USB 1 devices they installed uh, automatically but to get the USB 2 speed going I had to install this driver version 2.7 and after another restart I installed the driver for the SATA controller so I'm using the Promise SATA 150TX4 PCI controller with four SATA ports and I believe this is also the latest driver and version, version 100027 and I also checked that the controller has the latest BIOS. Um, just in case it didn't, I downloaded the uh, BIOS from the Promise website. So Promise is also good, they've got all the drivers still on the website. And after the restart, the last thing we needed was just installing the Autogy 
two setters. Um, I've got the driver CD of the internet and I did a full installation. That took the longest, but it worked and it also installed DirectX 9 uh, apparently. I don't know if there's a way around that, but look, it's the latest version of DirectX 9, so uh, why not? And then I restarted the computer and the machine was ready to go. Now there are lots of Millennium tweaks around on the internet. I kept it fairly simple. I just changed the power profile to always on. I disabled uh, Hibernate and also disabled System Restore, which is uh, through the uh, control panel. And also went into the PowerVR graphics driver and turned off VSync for benchmarking. At this point, and I will have a future video about the PowerVR, looking at it in more detail, but um, just a heads up, the drivers are fantastic. Um, they have lots of options and really, um, they remind me of the Voodoo drivers. Very simple, everything is in one place and they just work. And the card also has options for uh, super sampling, anti-aliasing, as well as texture filtering. So you can make all the games that run well look a little bit nicer. And then I ran all the usual benchmarks. And I actually did it several times because it took me a while to figure out uh, the right drivers. Initially, I used the driver disk, but then I wanted to check out the drivers from the uh, internet to have the latest version. Okay, so did I run into any issues? No, I did not. I certainly had not a single blue screen. I had an issue with 3D Mark 2001, which hangs after the first test, but this is likely a video driver I've seen similar issues like this in the past. I had one crash to the desktop in 3D Mark 2000, but again, that's 3D Mark. I've seen this before under 98. So there you have it, guys. My Windows Millennium experience was actually very positive. Now, there might be a reason why it worked well for me, and uh, a lot of you actually had negative experiences in the past. So firstly, the motherboard I'm using is fairly modern. It's got a newer chipset. Likely, um, they've fixed a few issues there along the way as well. Now, we're also benefiting from using the very latest drivers. So back in the day, um, this whole thing reminds me of Windows Vista. When Windows Vista came out and the drivers were all buggy and there, or maybe there were no drivers um, and the hardware was underperforming as well with just 512 megabytes of RAM and the shared graphics running Vista is not really a good experience. So um, the whole Windows Millennium uh, thing reminds me a lot of uh, Windows Vista. Now, the SATA controller was also very compatible and the drivers worked. The Blitzwolf SSD also worked fine. I did align the partitions. One of the uh, viewers commented on that. I didn't really see any difference in the performance, but this might be a good topic for another video to check that out. The Sound Blaster Audio G2 setters was working fine and sounds fantastic. If you're looking for good retro sound cut, I can highly recommend it. I didn't end up installing any service packs. I found a lot of them floating around and I really couldn't decide which one to use and there was no general recommendation telling me this is the best service pack. So I just left it and I didn't have any issues anyway. Also, I've got some benchmark results already now for the uh, next few videos and because I want to do some uh, comparison between Millennium and 98. So I, I'm keeping everything vanilla and uh, plain. Another reason why people might have had issues in the past was maybe they have upgraded Windows instead of doing a clean install. I used the OEM version and doing a clean install is nothing. It's like, like Windows 10 now with the uh, creators update. You want to do a clean install to make sure you have no issues at all. Um, so yeah, my experience was positive. Everything looks and feels more modern. It's very similar to Windows 98. I didn't have any issues finding stuff. And look, all I'm doing is playing some old games. I had a quick look at trying DOS. So I created the startup disk and it worked fine. I could try a few games and some benchmarks. But to me at least, um, DOS feels a bit wrong with Windows Millennium Edition. I, The way I see it, if you, if you want to use DOS, I would recommend sticking with Windows 98. It's all integrated and it works great. And I've got a, uh, a starter pack that sets you up with all the drivers. But Millennium for me could be a good idea to, to just have a Windows only retro machine and you want to use something different to 98. So um, yeah, what about a recommendation? Can I highly recommend it? Well, not yet. Look, I've only built one system with it and all I did was run a few benchmarks in a few games. So the jury is still out there. I have to get a lot more experience. But is it worth checking out for yourself and, and seeing um, if it's really as bad or as good as some people say? Absolutely. So I always recommend to do your own testing, make up your own mind. And if you use the latest drivers and you've got a decent motherboard and you're using uh, decent hardware and a good power supply, I don't see why it shouldn't work well for you.
And that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to produce this video and get it out because after that build, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you were eager to hear how I went. Now I've got uh, a lot of videos planned around the graphics card, around the operating systems, around the storage. So stay tuned. It will all uh, happen over the next few uh, week or weeks maybe. So yeah, see you soon with another video.